So Pietro is from uh, University of Padua in Italy, and I, uh, he's an endocrinologist, but he's really at heart an ostromologist. He's our go-to guy if we have questions that any time of day or night, he'll, he'll be there to give his advice. So uh, we really appreciate him, and I'm glad you're going to be giving us a, a quick, short course in everything about endocrinology and metabolism <laughs> that you were afraid to ask. Good morning. Um, thank you, Jean, for your kind invitation. Thank you, all of you, to be here. And uh, after so long time this morning, it has been a terrific day, so wonderful to be here with you. I, I give you, I present you just a few slides of where I work, where I am. This is the, the hospital where I work, where we work every day. It's in Padua, it's in North Italy. Let me check the point. Yes, so we work in this, in, in this area. And I want to show you also some of the patients that have not been able to be here with you today. These are a group of Italian patients, and uh, this is a picture that we take uh, in our last meeting in, uh, near Padua, in a, in a spa area near, near Padua. So wonderful place where everybody enjoyed, and we had a mix of science and fun and, uh, and so on. Just in uh, how, 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 how it's gone there. So, this is a, a group of Italian patients apart, this one is a part of them. And uh, uh, how does it work in Italy actually? We have a, an organization, uh, the name is uh, ASAI, and, and the acronym, uh, it's also an acronym uh, because ASAI, S-S-A-E, A-I, sorry, means a lot in Italian language. So we want a lot for Astron syndrome patients. And we have a web page now in Italian, unfortunately for you, it's an Italian language. And, uh, and we have also a Facebook group that works very well, in, uh, always in Italian language. So I suggest for people uh, that don't have, uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, a group, uh, uh, maybe a national association, uh, uh, and it doesn't spoke the English language, uh, I, I suggest you to raise uh, at least a Facebook group in uh, maybe in Spanish, as uh, most of them spoke Spanish or in French language. They, they work very well, independently, easy to do. So uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, um, I, uh, I have any address uh, myself, I mean, in Facebook, and I did it for Astron Syndrome. So I'm on Facebook too, so I suggest you to do this. It's wonderful. Now, uh, let me go to my part as an endocrinologist, as you invited me here. I want to show you, I, I, I will ask you some questions during my presentation, and I want to see uh, uh, how things are going on with you. So, uh, hands up of uh, who of you uh, have anything have, have, have to do with uh, uh, low, with short stature in your families, in your patient, in, in your... Did anybody of you have a concern related to short stature or growth hormone relation? Few you? Okay, so it's not a big concern. Uh, I'll give you just a short presentation about this point, so I, I will try to skip and go into other things. So, uh, short stature, obviously, in Astron syndrome is related to many problems, especially to the genetic background. Anyway, the stature of the body is uh, controlled by the growth hormone, and growth hormone is part, is produced by the pituitary gland, into the middle of the brain. So the pituitary gland produce some hormones that work in the liver and uh, give the possibility to reach a normal height. This is just a famous example of a patient uh, with growth hormone deficiency. And uh, uh, you, you, with growth hormone deficiency, you, you can grow up very well when you do your normal life and to be also uh, a top player like this one. So there's no problems. It's just to think about uh, the problem and and when you found it to correct. Uh, somebody spoke today about uh, the bone disease, uh, osteoporosis, vitamin deficiency, and uh, growth hormone control also the bone health, or not only the growth, but the bone health. So it's important to control in, in case your medical doctor have a suspicion of growth of hormone deficiency, uh, the fact that there could be a relationship with the bone health. How do, you, how do we study the growth? We study by uh, clinical examination, we have growth chart, we study the bone age, some laboratory tests, and obviously we have to know how is the pituitary gland. 
For instance, uh, in, uh, in the meeting that we had three years ago, some, some of you, uh, some of your, uh, uh, some of the patients, uh, Alston syndrome patients, were tested by pituitary MRI. And we found that uh, uh, um, a sensible number of patients uh, have an empty cella. Empty cella means that you have a reduced volume of a pituitary gland. And the reduced volume of a pituitary gland get, could give a defect of the hormones produced by the pituitary gland. At that time, three years ago, we have no possibility to test for the lab test, to do the lab test, I mean, the hormonal function of the pituitary gland in this, because uh, this is an, not an hospital, uh, uh, so it was not possible to have a blood sample. Anyway, we, uh, this is a, a concern, a suggestion, and we published that paper. Uh, uh, so this is the point why the pituitary gland have to be uh, have to be checked in uh, in, in, in Alston syndrome patient, and the problem that give in, uh, in the kids is the relation to the to reach the normal height, but in adult patient, pituitary uh, the growth hormone have an effect uh, the control of body mass, the, uh, uh, the fat the fat mass for instance have an effect on the strength, vitality, and also the psychological well-being. So. Uh, these are important features that we have to think about. And the therapy is, is quite simple. It usually is an injection that you do uh, every day, a subcutaneous injection, and uh, it's easy to, to do this. And buy. Okay. So uh, the other point is I want to ask you, did you have any concern about the thyroid function? Anybody of you? Hand, hand up. More of you? Okay. A little bit more. You see that uh, uh, approximately 20% uh, of Alston syndrome patients uh, could have a concern related to thyroid function. And uh, thyroid could have a, a large number, of, uh, 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 so a lot of disorders are related to, to thyroid gland. But in Alston syndrome, uh, the, main, uh, the main disorder that we could have is, re is related to hypofunction of the thyroid gland. So I, I will focus uh, uh, my presentation related to thyroid gland, about the thyroid gland, about the fact that uh, you, you, you could have a deficiency of thyroid hormones. Thyroid gland, as you see here in this cartoon, is uh, in the middle of the neck. And the function of a thyroid uh, is uh, a, a relationship with the iodine intake, because there are some areas in the world, like in Italy, for instance, where we have a, a, a low iodine in uh, the background, I mean in the, in the ground of the soil. So that's why Italian are also, Italian endocrinologists are experts in thyroid disease, because we have a lot of pathology like related to thyroid the nodes, for instance, but it's not the topic of this uh, talk. And thyroid has many, many effects on the growth, on metabolism, you see here, and the thermogenic effect. It's sort of, uh, the thyroid is sort of, you have to think a car, the car that uh, have not enough uh, fuel, oil, car doesn't go on. So it's a sort of uh, uh, um, oil for your car. And it, it gives a lot of uh, problem. And maybe, maybe all of you in this room feel sometime something, uh, of some, in some ways, part of this problem. So it's not easy to detect because uh, uh, everybody of us feel tiredness, tiredness. Everybody of us sleepiness sometime at 2 in the morning. So uh, is it the thyroid or not? Anyway. If your doctor has a concern, it's easy to check. It's just a lab test, very easy to do, and you have just to measure uh, FT, FT4, TSH, and uh, obviously you have a clinical evaluation, some imaging may be useful, like ultrasound especially, but it's easy, very easy to test, and just the uh, main point is to think about this possibility. And you have to think the possibility that Alston syndrome patient could have a deficiency of thyroid function. And uh, once again, the point is to check because you have a core. It's a very easy core to do. And this is a, uh, based on the tablets that you, can, you, you have to take every day. And uh, for those of you that took these tablets, uh, I remember that I have to take in a fasting stake in the morning. Fasting and then wait maybe half an hour if possible before having your breakfast. And there are also some liquid formulation of thyroid uh, hormone that you, you can eat immediately. Anyway, this is just you have to, to, to be careful. So it's very easy 
you. What about uh, uh, estrogen and testosterone? How many in this room, uh, we have families, I mean patients have a concern related to these hormones? Some of you, okay. This is a, another uh, big point, a frequent point in, uh, in, uh, in Aston syndrome patient. You have to uh, separate what happened in a, in a man and what happened in a, in a male and what happened in female, in females. Uh, as a general mechanism, uh, the hormones that uh, control the production, uh, the, the, I mean the glands that control the production of sex steroids, uh, have a control from the brain, the pituitary gland that I showed you before, so you could consider this is the brain and uh, uh, the end organ that produce the sex steroids. So the testes for the male and the ovary for the females, just to make simple this mechanism. So in uh, uh, Alstom syndrome, we, 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 have a, uh, 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 we could have a problem in the end organ, I mean the testes or the, or the ovary, and we have a, 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 redux, a, 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 redu a reduced production of sex, story, sex steroids and at the same time an increase of the hormones from the pituitary gland that regulates this production. Or, as I, sh as I said to you, for instance, related to empty, empty uh, pituitary, yeah. empty cella, sorry, <laughs> you, you can also a problem related to pituitary gland. So we have a both a problem in a pituitary and the testes. So you, have, you could have both a low hormones produced by the pituitary gland and low levels produced by the testes. And uh, what happened, uh, what we see, uh, was frequent to see, is that uh, especially in, uh, in, in males, we, we, we have a, um, a, a reduced production of uh, uh, sex steroids. Uh, in some way, the ovary seems to be more resistant uh, in some way. I mean, the ovary, not the pituitary gland of women. So uh, it's frequent to have uh, um, a uh, problem related to the periods in women, but not related to an insufficiency of the ovary, but mainly related to a problem to the pituitary gland and metabolism. While in male, it's very frequent to have a, a problem in the testis, in the testis and in the pituitary gland. And uh, uh, so, because uh, it seems to be more sensible to the mechanism that uh, give uh, um, uh, a disease or a pathology in Aston syndrome, maybe fi fibrosis or something that doesn't work very well related to the ciliary function. So, for instance, the milestones to reach the normal uh, pubertal, pubertal age, as you see here, maybe in some way don't reach it the, at, the, uh, at the upper date age. So, once again, the symptoms, uh, uh, I'm, uh, this is for the male patient, uh, is uh, uh, maybe sometimes very subtle. So, uh, uh, this is uh, in a, a prior to puberty, as you, have a, you could have a, a problem that you see here related to decreased muscle mass or scant pubic or axillary hair that you see or uh, some other problem. Like gynecomastia mastia is a, a frequent use I see in uh, also in Italian patients. And in post-pubertal post age, other problems are related, as you see here in a, in a, in a series of symptoms and signs related to uh, uh, the effect of testosterone that have in the body. So the diagnosis again is simple, uh, uh, just to test, lab test, very simple to do, and some, mm, I, I, I don't go through all these kind of uh, works. Anyway, the clinic is, the, is my main point is uh, uh, to, to collect the clinical records and just visit the patient, just go with them and uh, test a few. So, the goal of therapy, obviously, is to revert this clinical picture, and uh, it could be done uh, by testosterone, but you have a lot of form of testosterone from uh, gel. Some of you I know, I, I, I do prefer usable, usually injectable, because it's easier to do. Now we have also free months, free months injection, so uh, very, very easy to go, go uh, reach stable levels of testosterone, so, um, other, uh, other do prefer the gels because they do by themselves every day anyway. There will many, many possibilities. Obviously, for all the medication that I'm talking to you, there are 
outward effects, so especially we have to be careful about the hematocrit, for instance, in, uh, in our population. Uh, as I said, in uh, women, uh, we, uh, we don't have usually a reduction of estrogen. When we measure estrogen in women, uh, in comparison to, to, to males, uh, we, we, we found a normal level of estrogen. Uh, anyway, women uh, uh, frequently present, uh, 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 don't have periods or irregular periods, um, or oligomenorrhea and so on. And uh, this happened because, uh, as, I, as I said to you, the pituitary gland doesn't, uh, doesn't produce in the appropriate way the, the cycle of the production of this hormone that are related to many, many, many factors that come from the ambient and from the uh, metabolism. And an important point, uh, this has affected especially the females, uh, related to the fact that metabolism, especially insulin resistance state and uh, uh, obesity, uh, create a, a sort of uh, increase of testosterone levels in the in testosterone plasma levels, so the, uh, the hormones of the, of the males in, in the women. And this is also in, in some way affect uh, the uh, regularity of the cycle and, um, and, and may, may create and at the same time also some other features that are very well known in these patients like uh, acanthosis, nigricans, uh, and so on. So, or the hyperandrogenic condition that you see here. The treatment uh, in women, uh, usually uh, they, 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 it works very well. And the last one that I show here is metformin. It's very helpful in uh, women with Alzheimer's syndrome patient. Or you, you have to uh, combine estrogen and, progest and progesterone uh, according to the uh, values that you found or the problem that you found when you, when, you check, uh, when you check women. But you have to be careful using this medication, especially estrogen and progestinic uh, uh, medication, because you, you, you know that in an overweight patient, uh, they, they could increase uh, uh, the overweight situation, increase your weight, and uh, uh, they don't have a good metabolic profile. So you have to be careful about this. So uh, the last part of my presentation, uh, I hope you hope I have time for I have time for it. Yeah, uh, it's related to diabetes and uh, uh, and, and metabolism. Uh, your hands up. How many of you have a concern about this point? In your family? Yes. Okay, that's much more important. I see. Uh, we we had also a beautiful talk from Claire Francomano about the diet, and I, I, I wish I will say you something more about the diet because uh, this, this is a very very important point for our patients and for all of us I think. So uh, mm, uh, let me start from uh, uh, what we are talking about. It's type two diabetes, so it means that. In, uh, uh, our insulin may be very high, huge level of insulin in Alzheimer's syndrome patient. We saw this also at the scientific meeting. <laughs> means that uh, your pancreas uh, seems to work very well sometimes. It produces a lot of insulin, but it doesn't work appropriately. So your blood sugar goes up for a combination of factors. Uh, obesity, uh, your genetic background, the genetic background of your family and the genetic background of Alzheimer's syndrome patients, uh, your age, and the ins insulin resistance states in the end organ that control uh, the insulin uh, function like the liver or the muscle mass. The muscle mass is real, it's very important because you can, uh, by yourself, you can have an effect of insulin resistance by improving the health state of your muscle mass. This is a you can do uh, this only in, in, uh, in one way, this is exercise. So I give you some uh, 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 um, counseling about exercise, what you have to do, think to do. Uh, mm, you know very well, uh, probably more than me, that we, the problem, the facts about diabetes in Aston syndrome. So uh, we have hyperinsulinemia, so we have some nice paper in literature about all these points. Uh, it starts very early, um, and uh, acanthosis nigricans is a sign, is a precocious sign of uh, uh, hyper, hyperinsulinemia. And uh, anyway, we, uh, 
first, not only bad news, but the good news is, is that you can control this diet, exercise, and a lot, a lot of uh, uh, new medication coming in the market. So um, we, we we can do uh, we can do a lot for our patients. So uh, remember about symptoms, because uh, 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 one point is that uh, uh, you could have uh, uh, type two diabetes and complain nothing. So uh, you have to check this, because glycemia may go up. <laughs> and you don't know that you have, like, your glycemia is high, exactly. so it's very important. When you have symptoms, usually we have a, you could have a complication of hyperglycemia, especially uh, in type 1 diabetes, but it could happen also in type 2 diabetes. Type 1 mean, means that you don't have absolutely insulin in your, in your blood, but sometimes it happens also in Aston syndrome patients, because when you stress your pancreas so much, at a certain point, uh, the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin. So you could have a situation in which you lose, uh, you urinate frequently, you have polydipsia uh, at first and so on, you became hunger and you lose weight in some way. And uh, other, other uh, interesting uh, clinical, uh, clinical clue are related to infections, for instance, are very uh, frequent in these patients. So, and we have a range of complications, a range, a lot of complications and uh, especially it's related to the cardiovascular systems. I, I, I want to stress this point because uh, um, we, uh, we are facing uh, with an Aston syndrome, Aston syndrome population of patients that is growing up. We don't have to think that our patients, uh, they, they grow up. I, there is an Italian patient uh, which is 54 year old, 54. So, we have to work to keep everything under control, including diabetes. So you have to work very well in your family about this point. We have to prevent. I know that from a scientific point, point of view, in our meeting, we don't know very well, uh, I mean, what's happening in the future related to, I, I see beautiful talk related to lipids, uh, beautiful talks related to heart disease in Aston syndrome. Uh, there could be also some uh, kind of protection of the arteries of Aston syndrome patient. But we, I think we have to, to work uh, uh, very carefully and we have to, 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 to complain as much as possible which, uh, uh, with a guideline of treatment. So, uh, and, and think that your kids, your boys, we became older, older and they have to be uh, healthy as much as possible, where you could control it. So, meal planning, weight loss, exercise, and medication. So this is my main point. Um, about diet, uh, mm, uh, one point that I, I want to stress with you, that carbohydrates are not all the same. So, when you, when you check the quantity of carbohydrate, you know, what you eat, it's very different how the carbohydrates work, how the carbohydrates are absorbed by your gastrointestinal system. This is a very important point. For instance, fruit, vegetables, fruits, for instance, the fruit. It's quite good, it's quite good to, to, to eat fruit, but remember to eat the entire fruit. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't, 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 be, uh, the fruit don't have become a liquid. It's not the same. Because the increase of glycemia in that case is totally different because you lose the fiber included in the fruit. So fruit, the food composition is quite important. So remember this point in your diet. So food composition, the fiber content, the viscosity, the volume, I know it's sort of uh, things related to engineering and something like that. It's not only a chemical fact, but also a mechanical fact. So remember this point. So this is a, an aspect that uh, uh, affect uh, the increase of glycemia in your circulation, and at the same uh, uh, have an effect of insulin levels. And this have an effect also in the symptoms that the patient could have. So uh, it's, uh, I want to stress very much this part of my talk. Okay, so be careful with this. So that's why. Uh, the, the carbohydrate have a different, uh, we, we use this term, 
glycemic index, which is the, on the top of the slide. What does it mean, glycemic index? It's the capacity of a carbohydrate to increase glycemia in your body. So if you, if you eat poor glucose or potatoes or bread, they, they have a high effect on glycemia. The glycemia go up very much. But with the same quantity of carbohydrate in other, uh, uh, in other, uh, uh, I mean, in, in other um, food, don't give the same increase of glycemia. So, for instance, uh, this is an example. So this is the glycemic index very high, and this is an example of uh, a food which is the glycemic index is low. So be careful to control this part. So, for instance, uh, uh, you have uh, any way to prepare what uh, Claire Francomano said to you. So it's very good, but consider this aspect. So anyway, whatever the diet you do, remember that have to be balanced. So should have a, 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 a quantity of protein, an appropriate quantity of carbohydrate, and the appropriate quantity of fat. So whatever you do, generally you have to um, follow these general rules. So it's important. And you see that the carbohydrates are not a devil. So you, you can eat it, but you have to be careful of this part, uh, what you say, you low glycemic index. So the carbohydrate that you find in vegetables, fruit, legumes, also pasta, uh, or boiled rice, for instance, are, are better than others. So, uh, Yes, a few, this is a, my uh, group of last slides are related to exercise. Oh, we have to think about exercise. It's the, the other side of a coin is half of the work. You uh, have to think that you have to use your legs every day, every day. You have to work, just simple. You don't need uh, a trainer, you don't need, uh, you don't have to spend money. It's very easy. Just work, 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 work every day. Remember this. Remember this point. So, and start to work. You don't have to run the marathon, okay? Start to work, simple. And when you can do this, avoid the elevator. So, work every day, remember this. Easy. So, any exercise is better than nothing, obviously. <laughs> You have a lot of benefit. It control of an effect on the blood sugar. You have to do every day, frequently, not once a day, not during the weekend, every day. Uh, small quantity, not too much, okay? Because it could be a revolution. You don't have no, no revolution, okay? Small quantity. Some tips related to diabetes. Uh, remember that in particular situation that could be a problems related uh, between exercise and diabetic. So exercise could reduce glycemia because you would improve the muscle, the effect of the insulin, insulin on, on the muscle, so you, you, you might have hypoglycemia. So be careful, don't exercise in this condition, for instance, when glycemia is below 70, or if you are in a in, 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 in not an healthy state related to diabetes. So, this is what you see here, some suggestion on how to exercise. So, anyway, before exercise, everybody of you, uh, of your patient, of the patient, of Aston syndrome patient, followed by a doctor, uh, you don't need a special doctor, just a GP, general practitioner, okay? Just ask him, because he knows very well how is the situation. I, I, I want to say, obviously, that there are some patients that are affected by uh, heart disease. So in that case, it's very important to have a, uh, counseling with a uh, heart specialist, with a cardiologist. But in generally, generally, also the cardiologist says that uh, working usually doesn't cause any problem, okay? So remember, some simple rule, check blood sugar, warm up and cool down, okay? And wear good shoes. Medication, there are a lot of medication. I have no time to talk about that. I just showed this slide because there are a lot of good news you see here. We have the insulin many years ago. 
and uh, last. And now uh, you see in the last 10 years how many new medication you have, a lot of them. So this is a business for pharmaceutical companies. So this is a good news. We want to do business, diabetes, uh, for a lot of patients with diabetes. So we have a lot of medication. For instance, uh, the last one medication is, uh, this is amazing, the SGL2 inhibitors, uh, the sort of tap that you open in your kidney and you have too much glycemia in your body, you urinate the glycemia in excess. For instance, this is just the last example with many other benefits. So there are a lot of medication. Your endocrinologist or diabeto uh, 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 diabetologist will suggest which is the better one. Most of you, uh, most of Italian patients also are in treatment with metformin, which remain the base of only treatment. But uh, this is my last slide. Remember uh, that the first point of therapy is the lifestyle mod modification. This is remain at the top. Remember, lifestyle means uh, uh, diet, exercise, weight loss. And then you could enter in this, uh, in this flow chart that is impossible to follow because it, it changed every two, three years, so difficult to follow. Anyway, the main stain of most of these therapies start with uh, metformin. This is my last slide. I want to show you some of, uh, of a group that works in Padua with Alston syndrome patient. Uh, these two girls, is, this is Gabriella Milan, and she's Francesca Pavaretto, which worked also in Jackson Lab for one year. And they, they work in the basic, in the laboratory. They work with genetic tests in Aston syndrome patients. Uh, with Marco Grignani, which is here, we have tried to be successful for European project related to mobile health for Aston syndrome patients. But unfortunately, we have not been successful Anyway, we will try again in the future. He became a friend of mine, so happy to, to find Marco in the group who's here. Uh, you met uh, Vera Bettini at this meeting. She is, uh, uh, now she's a specialist in internal medicine and uh, she, she takes both a graduation with a, a, a thesis graduation in, in uh, Alston syndrome and also a specialty in uh, internal medicine with a thesis in, in Alston syndrome. So many thanks to Vera for helping me. Uh, uh, this is my mentor, is Professor Nicola Sicolo. Uh, now he's retired, but uh, uh, I had the opportunity to work with Alston syndrome patient because uh, 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 a patient from the southern Italy was referred referred to him for advice many years ago. At that time, I came in contact for the first time with uh, the Alston syndrome. So he helped me a lot. He, uh, he teach me a lot about. Uh, I mean. And, and technology, internal medicine, and so on. You know, Jan and Robin, this is a wonderful uh, meeting that we have in Padua. This is uh, 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 Elisabetta Zulato. She's a biologist. She doesn't work anymore with us. But I want to show this uh, beautiful lady because uh, she did all the experiments uh, in fibroblasts. Fibroblasts is a crucial point of a syndrome. And she worked a lot with fibroblasts. And she did most of experiments we did and we published about fibroblasts. And about <coughs> with this experiment, we know that there is an increase of collagen production in fibroblasts. And finally, uh, the last one is Roberto Vettor, who is actually the chief of my clinic. And I work very well. We work very well together. So he, 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 it's possible that I continue to work in Aston syndrome and funding and so on thanks to his, his help. So, thank you. Thank you. Is it on? Yes. Uh, we're, of course, running behind, but I think we have time for just one or two questions, and you can um, catch up with Pietro, too. He'll be here for the rest of the conference. So, question? My daughter was recently diagnosed with hyperlipidemia with high LDL. Nobody has taken the time to break that down for me. So what does this mean, all these fancy words? You mean hyperlipidemia? Yes. Yes. It could be an effect also of diabetes. You have to be careful uh, to, to think about, um, to try to, I mean, 
try to collect the whole story of the patients. So uh, we have the genetic background that could increase lipid levels in, in the blood, and uh, we have some beautiful study that we have seen as synthetic mythic. Anyway, we have to think also of diabetes that could increase lipid levels or hypothyroidism. I have to check about this. And uh, usually, uh, lipids that became high in Nelson syndrome are triglyceride, and you have to be careful about that because they could uh, give in high, in some case, pancreatitis. So, and the good is that triglyceride could be well controlled with diet. So, be careful with the diet. And in, in case the diet doesn't function, we have good medication that control this problem. So, usually, we, it's possible to control very well. Hello, the question here is about um, uh, if you could address the issue of sterility. 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 Yeah. sterility. Yes, this is a big question. I think that uh, in, th in, theory, in theory, all Aston syndrome could conceive. In theory. Uh, in practice, uh, um, the main problem is related to, to a fact that uh, uh, you have to separate what's happening in male and what's happening in females. Uh, males have uh, uh, a huge impact on the testes, so uh, they, they does not produce uh, uh, sperm, does not produce uh, enough uh, um, spermatozoa, so mm, I think that sterility is, uh, is not possible to, to conceive. In theory, females produce uh, 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 the, the ovary produce the uh, are effective on the lute, luteal function so they could ovulate they could ovulate and uh, in theory they could conceive I, I don't uh, we don't have any data actually about this aspect uh, and we are not aware apart from UK probably which could be one case uh, but I have no data. You mentioned using diet to control diabetes and triglycerides. They, when we have fit with Alstrom syndrome, there are frequently multiple issues affecting the affecting the the diet. For instance, my wife is diabetic. She has high triglycerides, and she has and she has kidney issues stage two kidney disease, which, which makes her not handle potassium correctly, right. can cause her potassium le levels to go up. Yeah. Several of the foods that I saw you up there, saw you put on your slide up here, like such as milk and broccoli, are re they're, they're great for diabetes, they're great for, they may be good for tri triglycerides, they are high in potassium, they, send her potass they can send her potassium levels through the roof. How, can you address the issue of how to balance that? What can you recommend? Any kind of a dietary plan or anything that would that would to balance the the multiple multiple demands of, on diet? Yeah, yeah, we are absolutely right. In case of kidney failure, uh, it's rather complicated to follow the appropriate diet, uh, especially related to, as you mentioned, uh, the potassium levels or um, calcium, for instance, uh, and so on. So. Uh, uh, what I show you was a general, general rule, but sometimes doesn't apply it in particular situation like the kidney failure. So in that case, I think is uh, it's better to, uh, I mean, to uh, have a different diet related to your problems. And sometimes, uh, uh, yes, usually food could affect, for instance, potassium. But uh, uh, if you have a, a kidney failure, important, I mean. Uh, important kidney failure, probably it's better to control potassium with the medication that are available now. So uh, I suggest to you to, uh, to have a combination of uh, uh, medic to medication and, and diet in that case. So obviously also the lipid levels are increasing in kidney failure, yes. So uh, also in that case, uh, uh, we tend to use medication. About milk, uh, especially, uh, my suggestion do, does not use the entire milk, but uses creamed milk. 
because the quantity of lipids is reduced. Is there a therapy for hypogonadism? And if yes, is it an, an age appropriate or after a certain age, no? Hypothyroidism? Hypogonadism. <coughs> ah, hypogonadism? Yes, with yes, a therapy. Hormones, you can give them testosterone in males. You, you, you just replace the end organ. This is the simple way. Uh, if you have to conceive, it's totally different because um, testosterone doesn't does have any effect on the sperm count, for instance. So you, you replace just the, the hand function. And or the same for the female, you give estrogen a pill, for instance. But your main concern is related to the metabolic aspect and, the, and obesity. So yes, we have a, a lot of hormones that control this one. Is there an age that you have to take the therapy after Sorry? the stage? Is, is, it, is there a certain age until which you have to have this therapy? Or and after when in a, yes, an adult, could, it's too late? Yes, the therapy uh, could start also in uh, the childhood, since the childhood. Yeah. And, pros and, and prolonged in uh, adult. Yeah, so pediatricians have to be involved. Thank you.